Hey there, and welcome to this course on the Bach Bourre from the Lute Suite in E minor. I'm Alan Matthews. I'll be your tour guide on this exploration of this marvelous piece. And in this video, we're just going to get a lay of the land. We'll talk about the overall game plan, how we're going to approach this piece, how this course is set up, and uh, get you some few tips and also some uh, things to watch out for as well. So let's jump in. So here we have the, the music all on one page. It has to be easy then, right? It's just one page of music, um, if only it were so. So let's just take a look really quick at just some basic landmark features of this. First off, we have one sharp in the key signature. And in this, sh this sharp is an F sharp, and that means that we're in the key of either G or E minor. And then we know, because it's from the lute suite in E minor, that it's in E minor and also the last chord down here are two E's so we can see that this is this piece is in E minor also the first two notes of the piece are not E's never mind so what's next then we also have this time signature right here C which stands for common time which is 4-4 four, four. so each measure will have four beats in it and we'll be counting 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and because eighth notes are our smallest note division. We don't have any 16th notes or 30 seconds or anything like that. So we'll be counting 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and the whole time because counting is what we do. So next, let's look at some, um, some roadmap signs here. Here we have a repeat and that is for the first eight bars here, these first two lines. So then this is the big A section. So we'll have, we'll go through it, we'll go through it again. So AA is the first part of that. And then here's a repeat, and then down at the bottom of a repeat, that means that this is the big B section. We'll play it twice. So our form is a binary form, A, A, B, B. Um, and this is really common for, um, for this time period. It's often said that whenever Bach pulled out a sheet of music, the first thing they'd do is just put two sections, put repeat signs, and then they'd write the piece. And so it was just the, the common practice to, to have this particular form for that time. Sometimes you'll find people don't play both of the repeats and everything, and that's perfectly fine. You can, you can choose. I like it because it's a short piece anyway to play the repeats. It also makes the form bigger, and we can do different things with the swells and fades and the, um, the balance of the top and the bottom and all that kind of stuff on the different uh, times that we do it. So we can add some variation as well. It makes it fun. All right, so now we have the big sections. Let's zoom in a little bit more here. And if you'll notice, every fourth complete bar. So this is a pickup bar that only has one beat in it. That first, that first measure only has one beat. But then every four bar, one, two, three, four, you'll see that we have this bass line. So if you just look at the bass, we have this little bass line. And then one, two, three, four, we have a big chord. And in the top, there's this long note as well. And then if you do that again, one, two, three, four, we have a bass line, one, two, three, four, we have a bass line, one, two, three, four, we have a bass line, and then we have our long note again. So this is split up into four bar phrases, culminating with the fourth bar as a long note in the top and a bass line getting us into the next one, getting us into the next four bar phrase. So that's the way that this course will be set up with working within these four bar phrases. But it's still a bit long because of all the notes, and so I've split it up further into so that each four bar phrase is two practice sections. So you'll notice if you look at the little squares with the boxes right here, if you can see these, then this is every two bars um, offset because of this first pickup note, these first two pickup notes uh, lead down to their ba ba boom. And that's the way the melody does throughout. And so um, that's the way the the, mel the melody does throughout, and so then that's the way it always does with these practice sections as well. We, we continue to do that instead of practicing at the downbeat, which isn't the musical division of the, of, it's not the division of the music. So that's how we'll do it. These are our practice sections, and with each practice section, we'll go through and talk about what's going on. And so the other thing I'd like to point out, just as we look at this piece of music, is that there are very few chords right with more than two notes mostly what's going on is that there is an upper line with up stems and then there is a lower line with down stems and that's mainly what's going on there's a melody and there's a bass it's just two parts of music for most and then at the big main points we'll have 
a chord. Actually, just right there is the only time, isn't it? So just at the end of that, then what we have a chord, and it kind of seems like that here, but it's still just two notes. So that's the way this music is laid out. It's a melody and it's a bass. And so as we're playing the guitar, what we normally do is we look at the shapes in our hand. What is my hand doing? It's these two fingers and these two fingers. And it's easy to lose track of the fact that the music is actually these two things that are going on instead of one. So as guitarists, we have to ride on, on two horses, so to speak. We have to have a foot in each camp, which is I have to know which notes go together. Right? These two, then these two, then these two, so that we can do. This is a big finger acrobatics. This whole piece is nothing but finger acrobatics. It's a lot of stretching and on the low strings and the high strings at the time, same time. So there's a lot of acrobatics that go on. So we have to know what's happening at the same time. With that, we also need to keep in mind what's going on musically. And musically, the right notes ideally, but. I should have done that better. But that's what's going on, right? Is there's a melody and then there's a bass. There's this bass line that's going on. So we need to just keep that in mind. Keep it in the back of your head. And we'll talk about it more. So that's the lay of the land here. That's what we're gonna be, that's what we're gonna be doing. One of the things if you would like to to get ready to play this piece is to go through and look at the notes. This first, just to say really quick. This first section, the big A section, is all down in the lower position. The second big B section is all over the place. It's all over the place. So one of the things that you can do to prepare for this top section, this first section, is just to look at the notes that you'll be using, which are just all the natural notes plus the F sharp instead of the F. So knowing that at the outset will make reading this a lot easier. If you're if you're shaky on the upper position notes, you can, one, uh, sweat it out and you know, learn it using this right here and count up the notes and everything. Or you can just grab the tab version and look at that and learn it from that. There's benefits to both, right? Um, ideally, you get better at reading the upper positions, but uh, there's something to be said for just grabbing the notes real fast and playing the tune as well while you're also working somewhere else on learning to read the upper notes. So that is up to you. The tab is included so you can do what you will. All right, so let's wrap there for our orientation. In the next video, we are gonna get started in earnest, jumping in to practice section number one. See you there.